So, yeah, yeah, take it away. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I'd like to begin by thanking the organizers for giving me a, a, an opportunity to speak here. I mean, yeah, events like these are a really good opportunity for young people like me. So, yeah. So, so yeah. So, so I'll be talking about non-presentable higher topo semantics of homotopy type theory and uh, a proposed realizability model. So the first part will be uh, mostly expository in nature based on work by Nima Rosek. So yeah, I'll, I'll basically be talking about the filter product model structure, uh, filter product model of homotopy type theory by Nima Rosek. And the second part is uh, joint work with Ulrich Buchholz from uh, University of Nottingham. So, okay, let's begin then. So here's the outline of the talk. So uh, I'll begin by uh, talking about the models of uh, homotopy type theory that uh, we have right now. And uh, yeah, a bit of a history kind of. And then I'll be talking about a, a few preliminaries, like a few, few preliminary definitions about things. And then I'll be talking about uh, the sex filter product model that uh, of uh, homotopy type theory. And at the end, I'll be talking about the realizability model. So let's begin. Right. So what is homotopy type theory? So yeah, I'd like to begin by, yeah. So by talking a bit about uh, homotopy type theory. So, so it is an extension of Martin Lev type theory with uh, the addition of high inductive types and univalence axiom, right? So yeah, I'd like to, yeah, before moving further, I'd like to make this, uh, make this, uh, make this clear that uh, I won't be able to like uh, give a very, uh, complete introduction. Yeah, I'll just briefly speak about it. Right? So, because of the time schedule that we have. So, homotopy type theory, yeah, I, I'd be calling it hot from now onwards. So, it, it lets us view type theory from the perspective of homotopy theory. So, we can see types as a propositions and spaces, right? So, so, you have this sort of a correspondence, right? Uh, so, yeah, it gives us new mathematical foundations. So, so maybe, maybe a few words about a few words about why it is different from set theoretic foundations. So this is a very rough way to see it. So this is the kind of picture that I always keep in my mind. So when we do set, uh, so when, uh, when we are doing, uh, uh, when we are doing math, mathematics so we're using set theory, so we have these uh, sets which have elements, but types uh, have more structure because uh, types, uh, they also possess uh, like collections of identification, which have, uh, an inferior group ordinal structure, right? So that is the kind of an advantage that we have uh, uh, when we are working with types. Right? So, okay. So what does it mean to have a model of homotopy type? Right? So classically, it's well known that an internal language of loop leak addition closed categories. So that is an extensional form of dependent type theory. Okay. So maybe a few words about what do I mean by an extensional form of dependent type theory, right? So, so in a sentence, I am, uh, so it is a kind of type theory when uh, your, your definitional equality is precisely equal to our identity. Type, right? so that is what I mean by, uh, I mean, that's the like rough definition. So I won't be talking much about it. So uh, type theory that is not extensional. So that is an intentional type theory and homotopy type theory hot is a intentional type theory, right? So, so we see that when we move from extensional to intentional, then the models are certain in 3D1 categories, right? So, Again, it turns out that for a presentable locally Cartesian closed in 31 category, uh, there's a presenting presentation by a type theoretic model category. We'll talk more about that later. So that is work by Mike Schulman, uh, which gives us categorical semantics of hot, right? So now if we also include the univalence axiom, so okay, univalence axiom, uh, we get uh, we get categorical semantics in infinity one topo. So so okay, maybe a few words about the univalent axiom. Uh, so, okay. So yeah, I'll be talking of it in terms. So suppose, uh, so in terms of vibrations. I mean, and after that, I'll talk of uh, talk about it in terms of homotopy type theory. So so suppose you know this is the kind of a picture that I have in my mind. So suppose you have a vibration. So 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 it is a univalent vibration. If, if uh, every other vibration can be generated as a like it is uh, like a pullback up to homotopy, right? So it is like the uh, so it is like the object classifier of an um, theory. So that's the kind of a picture that we have. And for intentional type theory, intentional dependent type theory, uh, like homotopy type theory, 
it is like uh, so uh, it is a statement that uh, so the map that you have between identity types and the functional type of uh, uh, equivalence um, of equivalent operations so so that is that the map itself is an equivalent so that is a kind of statement of our homotopy type right so let's move on so so for a model we are interested in having an infinity one category where we can interpret our type theoretic uh, construction right so for some constructions like the uh, product and co-product types, it is kind of obvious because uh, they correspond to co-products and products in infinity one categories. Pi, like for instance, the pi types, they correspond to local Cartesian closure and uh, the natural number type, numbers type to correspond to the natural number object and so on, right? So, but for some constructions, sorry, yeah, for some constructions like univariate inverses, universes, we encounter a problem, right? So type theoretic constructions are really strict in nature. And the infinity one categories generally are not very strict, right? And apart from that, I mean, we don't even have to go that far. So, so we already have strictness issues because of uh, function types with the eta rule that we have. As a composition must be strict. And in an infinity one category, we have composition of two a contractible space of choices, right? So, so yeah, in order to solve the problem, we will work with model categories, which are which are just strict one categories. So, so yeah, so a bit of uh, history. So yeah, so the models that we have up to now. So again, yeah, I won't be talking in length about any of them. I'll just be like talking about them briefly. So so yeah, Arndt Kapulkin introduced the notion of a logical model category, and they showed that they model the identity types, sigma types, and pi types. And uh, Schulman in 2015, right here, in 2015, introduced the notion of a type theoretic model category about which we heard a bit early, where pi types uh, satisfy function uh, extension and extension and Sorry about that. So Schulman Lumstein then uh, introduced the notion of a good model category that so that also models some higher inductive types, like uh, for example, the circle, right? Also. They, they introduced the notion of a combinatorial good model category, which they called an excellent model category, which is which is different from ex excellent model categories that we hear about. So, so yeah, it is called, so there is some sort of a uh, bit of an ambiguity, but yeah, they call them excellent model categories, which is a model for more uh, high inductive types, like truncations, for example. Then in 2019, Schulman introduced a uh, type theoretic model profile, which we'll be referring, uh, like calling as a, uh, uh, TTM to like, yeah, so type theoretic model topoid. So that kind of in, encompassed all the previous models and also modeled strict univalent universes. That will, we'll get to that a bit later. So, yeah, so, so that was a kind of a revolutionary step towards our understanding of semantics of thought because Schulman's uh, model provided a way to see thought as an internal language for reasoning in Rotenleek and Freddy one topoid, right? That is, every Rotenleek in Freddy one purpose can be presented by a model structure that interprets thought with strict univalent universe. So that was that was a big step. And after that, our Steve RD had conjectured that there, there must also be a notion of an infinity uh, of an elementary infinity one topos, so that we have uh, semantics of thought uh, with univalent universes in them. This is also, in some sense, related to the initiality conjecture about which I, I, won't, I won't talk much. So then in 2019, or oh, wait, okay. so Rasek developed a theory of elementary infinity one topoid, which ended up being the right model for HOT just a few months back. So recently, the problem's been settled by Sharade uh, by proving the existence of an elementary infinity one topo semantics of HOT. So, so this is something that has been, so, the, so yeah, I saw the paper uh, in uh, July. So yeah, that is something. So recently, this problem has been settled. But in this talk, I'll be focusing on Rasek's filter product uh, construction, and I'll talk a bit about a possible realizability model of thought, which is, as I said, work in progress. But again, I'll be really sketchy. I'll, I'll be kind of crushing up. So yeah, so we're interested specifically in non-presentable models of thought. And why is that? So yeah, what do I mean by that? So yeah, I'll kind of yeah, let me define a presentable. What do I mean by an infinity one category to be presentable? So it is said to be presentable if it is accessible and has four co-limits. So when I say accessible, I mean the thing that should be in our mind is that uh, 
it is generated under finite co elements by some subcategory of other suitable subcategory that generates, right? So that is the kind of picture that you have, right? So, right. So we know that every presentable infinity one category comes from a model category. And for the interested, so if somebody is interested in that, so that an explicit construction is given in a paper by Dago, we can talk more about that. So thus we're interested in having a more general semantics of the non-presentable infinity one categories, right? So, so that is kind of the motivation. So we begin by defining elementary infinity one topoi, and then we'll move on to filters, what filters are. So an elementary infinity one topos is a locally Cartesian closed category with a sub-object classifier. So yeah, it's a, with a sub-object classifier. So now, so, so examples would be, so Grotendieck one topoi are examples of an elementary one topoi. So, so like the canonical example that I can think of is that for any small site, C, the category of uh, chiefs. So that is an example of an elementary topoi. Then as we'll see later, I, I'll, I'll define realizability topoi. So there are also examples of elementary one topoi. In fact, they're really important in the sense they form an important class of elementary one topoi, which are not proven to be so, so they're really important. So we'll see that more of them later. So yeah. Uh, so the way to think of Grotendieck one topoi, I mean, this is just a remark maybe. So the way to think of Grotendieck one topoi is to think of them as elementary one topoi that are locally presented. So now let's define filters. So what is a filter? A subset of a poset. So yeah, filter is a subset of a poset. If uh, it is non-empty, it is upward closed such that the following happens, right? And it is downward directed. So here's the definition, right? So this is what we mean by a filter. So, 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 so like an example would be a filter on a set. So it is just the filter with respect to the partial ordering that we have between the sort of all subsets like the past set. And the inclusion is right. So that is uh, that's an example of a filter, or rather, kind of filters, like filter on a set. So some other examples would be neighborhood filters in, top in topology and uh, generic filters, which are employed in forcing techniques. Again, I won't be talking about this because of the time frame. So yeah. So let me define filter products of categories now. So so for so again, this is due to Rasek. So for a category X, we find the, so the filter product. So, so the objects, for the objects, it's pretty easy to see. I mean, for the object, it's not a big deal, but, but yeah, we need to take a moment to see what the morphisms are. So for, a morphism, for, the, so for the morphisms, you're kind of choosing here. So you're choosing a K and then you are taking the morphisms between X, I, and Y, I, or all I. And uh, so up to an equivalence. So the equivalence, uh, so here, so the equivalence basically means it's a way of, uh, so you can think about it by like saying, just saying that they agree on um, a large set. Yeah, so that's the way of thinking about the equivalence. So, yeah. So Rasek also introduced a notion of a type theoretic elementary model topos as an elementary analog of type theoretic model topos, which was introduced by Schulman to model of universes, which we define next. So again, I'm sorry. So a uh, model category is type theoretic model purpose. If it is an elementary purpose, model structure is right proper, simplicity and the uh, co-fibrations are monos. And an important thing to notice is that it should not be combinatorial and it is simplicially locally Cartesian closed. So, so maybe a word about it. So, 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 for, uh, so when I say simplicially locally Cartesian closed, uh, so, so for uh, every, like pullback functor that we have uh, over uh, the slice categories of two objects. So it, it also has a simplicially enriched right actual. So, so that's the way to think about simplicially both the those categories. And then you have this functor that I defined. So this functor has a fibrant cofibrant univalent universe. Now, what do I mean by that? So here, G, so this is my category of group points. So what do I mean by the last statement? So it is basically means that the category that we have, so we have a filtration of this form, such that for all C gamma, C gamma is in the filtration. So you have an acyclic vibration of this form. Right? So this is the way of uh, thinking about it, uh, where U is our universe, right? So and it is a good model because it interprets uh, model of type theory with pi types with function extensionality. Sigma types, the natural numbers type, universe types, identity types, and many more. And it generalizes type theoretic model topoi 
and includes most of the models except for uh, Schulman Lumstein's excellent model categories, which are combinatorials, does not include that. Right? So here's the model structure. Uh, so if M is a model structure, so this is in a classical sense, then the, that uh, it admits finite limits and co-limits, right? And uh, you have a set and a filter. So, so, so here's the construction. So this is the, so you have a model uh, structure on the filter product as well, right? So here this W is one of the distinguished classes of equivalences, variations of both. So, so the said also proved that, uh, yeah, this, this was an important step and proved that, uh, that uh, the filter product of a type theoretical elementary model topos is again a type theoretical elementary model topos that extended Edelman Johnston's reserve, which was that uh, the filter product of an elementary one topos is an elementary. So that was a classical result and this was kind of a generalization that we had. So, so maybe I didn't mention this, so filter portions of infinity one categories were something that uh, were introduced. So that is work by Rasek as well. So, so we did have a notion of that. So that is also work by Rasek. And uh, so, yeah, some obvious examples to think about would be the case of the category of simplicial sets. So you take that to be the category, and you take the fresh air filter and uh, you take I to be the uh, natural numbers. What do, we, what do I mean by the fresh air filter? Uh, so it is basically, uh, so when I say a fresh air filter, uh, so it is, um, so the way to think about it would be like, uh, so so it is co-finite sets. Yeah, that is the way to think about it. So so F, uh, F is in the filter, so an element F uh, uh, is in the filter if its complement is finite, I mean co-finite sets. That's the way to think about the fresh air filter, it's just a name. So, yeah, so now I'll be talking about the last section, last and important section that is on uh, assemblies and realizability top topoi. So yeah, because of the time that I have, it'll be really sketchy. So I'll, so I'll just give an assembly definition of realizability topoi. There's also a definition in terms of tripoi, but I won't be talking about that right now. So, okay. So an assembly is a pair. So you have a pair of a set and a map, where the map goes from the set to the, uh, set of all inhabited sets of uh, the set. Sorry, this is a no. Yeah, no. I think it's just fine. So yeah. So this is this is fine. So yeah. So a morphism between assemblies. So then yeah. So that is how we think of assemblies, right? So a morphism between assemblies is a category. Uh, is a map. Uh, so it is a map between the sets that we have of the assemblies, such that there exists an element in the set A, such that for all x in um, set of, the, of one of the assemblies. So there exists uh, under the map that, uh, under the map of the assembly, there exists some other element says that, um, so the A, so it says that this is defined and this belongs to the image of phi. Uh, yeah. So image of phi of x under the, uh, yeah. So yeah, this belongs to, so G is our, uh, yeah, G is our, uh, G is our map of the second assembly and phi is our uh, morphism. Okay. So yeah, so, so the realizability topo is now, so it is the X reg completion of, uh, so yeah, so, so the categories of assemblies, they kind of assemble to form a category, right? Uh, so, I mean, the assemblies form a category. So the X reg completion of um, category of assemblies is the topos, which is called the realizability topos. So maybe, maybe I'll say what this is. So X a completion, I mean, the way to think about it is like, uh, so if, if you have a, so for regular categories, if you have a, or, a, or okay, so maybe generally, so it is a category where the objects are congruences in the category that you have, and the morphisms are, uh, morphisms are relations that are both, uh, that are both uh, entire. And uh, so when I say entire, it is like for every, so a binary function, binary uh, map is a, is entire when for every element in the domain you have uh, at least one element in the domain, and uh, entire and uh, functional. It is set functional when it is uh, when uh, for every element of the domain uh, set you have at most one element. So it is both. So that uh, so these so that's how the, you can think of the morphism. So that is a way of thinking about X-ray completion of an arbitrary category. So again, yeah, I won't be defining congruences and stuff. 
So, so the basic idea is to use the effective model structure in a category of simplicial objects of the function realizability purpose. Again, I won't be talking about that in length because of the time, because I think I'm already out of time. So that we denote, so this is the way we denote it. So yeah, so we use that to get an infinity one category that is an element to one total. So that is the basic idea. So, so yeah, we use the fact that this is countable, countably, so yeah, this is the right one. Countably extensive, that is, it has finite limits and has Van Kamp and countable co products. Again, I won't get to length about them. And so, so here's the model structure uh, due to Yamino, Reed, Sattler, and Chumino. So, for a countably extensive um, category, the category of simplicial objects, is you have a proper Cartesian model structure where the vibrations are confibrations, co vibrations are really complemented inclusions, and the weak equivalences are just weak homotopy equivalences. Right? So this is the claim that we are working towards. Uh, so this is working, so as I said, this is work in progress. So, so the infinity category that you get by the category of vibrant objects of the, uh, of the category that you are getting of superficial objects. So that is an elementary with infinity one topos. Now, a lot of motivation of it comes from uh, the theory of exact completions. So, so yeah, I'll talk a bit about that as well, but maybe other times. So this would allow us to use homotopy type theory as an internal way of reasoning and function, functional, again, this is a typo, I'm sorry, functional realizability topoid. Uh, and so future directions would be having a homotopical theory of exact completions using the effective model structure and developing a theory of uh, higher that is homotopy realizability topoid. So for the second, for the, for, for the latter, let me say a few words. So there has been a theory that was, so if I, if I remember this correctly, so James Francis had, a, uh, so had some work related to the latter, but uh, in my knowledge, it is not really an established theory, but yeah, there is some uh, literature related to that. So yeah, I'd like to stop here then. All right, uh, let's thank the speaker. Okay, uh, do we have any questions? Uh, wait a second. Maybe someone's raising their hand. Uh, wait a second. Sorry. So, did, was someone raising their hand and I just missed it? All right. Uh, I guess if there are no questions, we are kind of behind schedule. So I guess I will thank the speaker again. Uh, and we'll uh, move on to the next talk. Yeah, so I'll stop. Uh, yep. Thank you.